Howdy y'all, I am Ice Gold, and today I'm showing y'all the best storm setup. <clears throat> I know this is one of the ones that's going to be the most anticipated in this series of seven videos. So, storm is the school that gets the most damage in the game by quite a stretch, to be honest, and uh, it's... It's definitely easy to see why. Storm has always been the damage school for as long as this game has been around, and that has really continued even through to this day. There was a time in about like you know 2018 to 2020-ish where <laughs> the devs decided to give fire more damage, but you know we're, Storm is back on, and uh, that is what matters. So I'm here in the Cloudburst Forest today just to show y'all the absolute best setup and where all of these pieces drop from. So. Just like the other videos, let's go over the stats first. So first off, uh, ignore that damage value. Now you can look at the damage value. So 237 is where you, if you go above this, you start to see diminishing returns. So like it would take a little extra to get to uh, 238, uh, like a little more than 238, I think maybe 240, 241. Uh, but then from there onwards, it, it really, curve sharply so just something to keep in mind so 237 is what you want to shoot for and this setup hits that exactly so that is pretty neat so i kind of love to see that resist is always going to be low i mean that is just uh, the life of a storm wizard that's just how it is that's what you sign up for uh you fortunately do have pretty perfect accuracy gotta say it's pretty solid uh, and then, you know, 871 crit rating. This is actually this is actually not bad. You get a pretty decent multiplier, uh, at least on the end game bosses and that type of deal. Uh, block doesn't really matter too much. And then you have 55 pierce, which is really, really good. And I think it's maybe 1% more than fire. So, you know, chalk that one on up to uh, being a good little plus one for storm. <laughs> so 55 pierce. Pretty good. Tower shields mean nothing to you. You know, perfect pips, and then some decent shads as well. Although this doesn't matter nearly as much on a storm as it would on like an ice, for example. So, how about we go on over all of the pieces? So, first up is going to be the hat, and this, like the others, is the Fierce Dream Reaver hood. And this hat goes hard. <laughs> like I don't, like I don't need to say much more than that. Like it is 37 damage from the hat alone, seven pierce. All that extra accuracy, health, and pip chance, 200 crit, which is actually quite a bit. Uh, and then you also get kind of a neat little galvanic field card. That's for sure, too. So, <laughs> yeah. So the Reaver hat, definitely on top for Storm. Uh, and actually by kind of a considerable margin. I won't even lie. It's like, yeah, it is only one pierce and two damage. But that's better than what Ice got stuck with, you know, like zero pierce and zero damage. <laughs> but, hey. Uh, uh, so, yeah. I mean, the Reaver hat... If you want to have 55 pierce at max damage, you do need the Reaver Hat, so just a little heads up on that. So, yeah, the, that uh, as well as these boots, the Reaper boots, uh, they drop from Malice in the Nightmare Dungeon, and that's going to be quite a fun farm, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the boots themselves, they don't actually have nearly as much of an impact as the hat does. I mean, you gain like literally four block rating and one damage, I think that's about it. Um, like a little bit of health but that's kind of about it so yeah you know uh, the hat is where you make most of your gains and then for the robe uh i'm gonna go out and say it there is i think a slightly quote unquote better option and when i say better i mean it's like the difference between these two pieces so i don't even know if you gain damage when you use that but yeah, uh, Stormy Robe of the Nullity, that's what you want to go for. The uh, Demonic Robe that drops from Personal Demon in the Polaris Raid does drop the uh, Demonic Robe, which is technically a step up from this. It's the 170 version of this robe, but I would really sweat getting it if you already have Nullity, like I do. And the Nullity Robe, uh, just on its own, that drops from the Nullity boss at the end of the Voracious Void Raid. And uh, just like with the Personal Demon in the Polaris Raid, you don't actually have to be fighting the uh, Nullity to, in order to get this drop. You can literally be on the outside doing drops like every three minutes and then just, you know, having your hand on your dick uh, for, for three minutes in between drum cycles. So, yeah, this robe is honestly not that hard to get. <laughs> I, will, I will come out and say that. So, 
uh, I've gone over the hat, robe, and boots. Next up is the wand. And this one, uh, I am using the Jabalba Crying Sky Sword. This gives 30 damage and 10 pierce. I don't really think I need to say much more. I mean, 30 damage and 10 pierce on a singular piece of gear is insane. And this is the first one that we've seen that has that has given 30 damage. Uh, I believe the... Uh, uh, what's it called? Fierce, right. Fierce Dream Reaver Boomerang uh, gives the same amount of damage, but if it's like the Fire uh, Boomerang, you actually gain 1% pierce by using the Jamalba one, so technically this is best in slot, so this drops from the Crying Sky Raid from Hoon Hao at the very end of it. Uh, it is the hardest content in the game, so I honestly wouldn't sweat it if you couldn't get this. Uh, you can settle for content that is marginally easier with the Malice in the Nightmare Dungeon, but, you know, it's like, just getting a good wand is just such a pain in the neck, <laughs> so I, I really wouldn't sweat it too much, but, yep, that is how things are. So yeah, this Jabalba wand, you get this from the, uh, from who now, in the Grind Sky Raid, so, you know, raid piece here, raid piece here, you do get some good chats from it though, so, pretty cool. Next on the list is going to be the Fierce Dream Reaver Knife, to absolutely no one's surprise, <laughs> this drops from, this drops from the Invader Fleets in the Doom Moon in Novus at the end of the Wallaroo storyline, go figure. So this, you know, 27 damage, that's already better than, uh, that, that is 3% better than the Eon of Thames. So, you know, if there was ever going to be another reason to, to go for it, that was, you, you definitely want the Reaver of Thames. That is for sure, you gain 3% damage on the Eon stuff. Like, I, like, genuinely, I think you gain maybe 10 to 15 damage across all of these pieces, uh, from Reaver compared to Eon, so... Storm is one of the ones where it does actually make a difference, so would recommend. Next, for the amulet, I am currently using the Hoon Hao amulet, dropped from guess who, <laughs> at the very end of the Chronic Sky Raid, but I'm only doing that because I had a damage jewel socketed into the Fierce Dream Reaver amulet, and this actually put me very over the damage cap, so I just decided to switch to an amulet that, uh, that gave, you know, uh, that I already had a pierce jewel sock uh, socketed in. I always mess up that word. But where I usually say with these Reaver amulets that they're better, I can't really say that in Storm's case because the 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 point that I give to all the Reaver amulets over the the Hunhao amulets, uh, because the Hunhao amulets do actually get two percent more resist uh, than the Reaver ones do. So you know, hard to argue with that, plus a little extra piece I've never heard anyone. But I like the Reaver Amulets for PvE purposes, because they typically give a slightly stronger blade, like for Fire, for example, it would be a 40 blade, for an Ice it would be a 45, but for a Storm, it is just a 35, because Storm's blades used to be just 30%. And this item card that has existed forever is just a 35, but if you take one look at your deck, base storm blade is 35%. So where this would get a leg up, it just sort of falters and uh, that is why I can say with confidence that the Hoonhao amulet is better. And this is going to be the only time you hear me say that. Uh, the Reaver amulet I would recommend for every other school because you do actually gain damage on the blade uh, compared to your base blade, but with the Reaver amulet on the storm, you don't. And the Hunao uh, amulet, in case you just wanted an extra blade anyway, you still get that star blade, which is kind of a neat little tri blade. Something different, something interesting. So, kind of love to see that. But yeah, Hunao's Crying Sky amulet from Hunao at the end of the Crying Sky raid. Definitely the best in slot. Uh, and it's close, I guess, but <laughs> this this is the only time when you see these two flip flopped. Uh, I don't expect what they are. So. That is the amulet. I went on quite the tangent on that, so <laughs> I'll try not to do that again. For the ring, it's obviously going to be the Fierce Dream Reaver Ring. This drops from Freddy Croker in the Dreaming. And as you can see, 20 damage. <laughs> you gain 1% from the Eon Ring, so kind of love to see that. It's, it's really just a standard upgrade to the Eon Ring. Nothing else much to it. <laughs> like, you, you get the... 
the same jewels and everything, so it's not too grand of an upgrade. If you don't want to farm it, I wouldn't really blame you, <laughs> but yeah, this is the best in slots uh, in terms of rings, and it is one of the less annoying farms in Wild Reaper, so would recommend. And I should mention that if you do want to go for the Reaver Amulet, this drops from Crash the Bandit Coot in the Lavagon territory in Wild Reaper. So that is from a side quest uh, yeah, that starts from Lady Cortexia in the Billy Bomb Resort, yes, uh, and yeah, you just farm crash, get the same from that, if you want to, <laughs> but I personally prefer Green Hal, uh, and then yeah, the ring, obviously Freddy. For the pet, I've got a Quint Damage uh, and Thinking Cap, I believe is the one that I have on here, so this, just like always, definitely the one to go for. If you are, like, made of money, then you can obviously do the Phyllis or combo, but I am not made of money, <laughs> so this is what we're doing today, and uh, I get max damage anyway, even without the Bronto, so that is pretty neat. Uh, this can be any pet body. I personally like the Clamory Gulcher. I've just always had this sitting around. It gives me a Stormblade and a Windstorm if I decide to use that. Um, rain cores are, are pretty good, too, I want to say. But, yeah. Glamour and Gulch, that's just what I have. That's what I've been had since, like, 2020, so <laughs> that's what's up. For the mount, yes, this is technically free. This is the Battle Narwhal. This is the only mount in the game that you can get for free that gives damage. And you can fish this up. As mind-numbing as that sounds, this is how I got it. Uh, but you can fish this up at the Polarian Explorer's Bundle House. And you can just access that via Castle Tours or through a friend. So, yep. Uh, not much else to it. <laughs> this is one of, I think, maybe three stat mounts with a rock and mammoth mini. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. But yeah, this is one of three stat mounts I think that you can get for free. So, <laughs> this is the one that gives damage. So, definitely uh, go for this if you are looking for a mount to prove your damage. For the deck, I just use the Reaver deck. You can sort of. Like, I have the Hunao deck as well, but. You know, <laughs> personally, I just use the Reaver deck. Uh, although the Hunao deck you could technically go for, considering you already have that Starblade from the Hunao amulet here. But, geez, there. <laughs> it, it never hurts to have an extra copy of Starblade, so. Yep, and, uh, yeah, the Hunao uh, Crying Sky deck. This actually drops, and I should mention this for the amulet as well, uh, but this this actually does not drop from now. <laughs> this drops from High Priest. Ishta, I want to say, is the one that drops the amulets, but just like the deck that drops from High Priest Yutasha, um, but you, you, they drop the 160 versions, so you do still need to beat Hunao in order to upgrade these to 170, so just something to keep in mind. But uh, the Fierce Dream Reaver deck, this drops from Mr. Montgomery, also in the Doom Moon and Novus in the Engineering Dungeon, so be on the lookout for him. Uh, you cannot take it from me, you do not have the power. Um, it's really late when I'm recording this, sorry. <laughs> I might say some, some dumb stuff sometimes, but yeah, that uh, that should cap it off. Um, yeah, I mean, with this, I have, I think only, yeah, yeah, okay, so I have only one uh, circle slot dedicated to these uh, the damage jewels, which also drop from Freddy Croker in the Dreaming, same as this ring, and they can also drop uh, in the Nightmare from uh, Malice, so just something to keep in mind. So, Four of them, four of the five circle slots, are dedicated to Pierce Jewels, which allows me to get up to 55, and then the last one here on the deck is dedicated to Damage, which gets me up to 237 damage. So, max damage, pretty solid Pierce. What more can you ask for? So, that is going to wrap up. Thank you all for watching. I've been Ice Gold. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a 50 comments for the algorithm. My Discord is down in the description if you want to check with me some more, and I will see y'all next